In this video, we'll walk through how Catalog can help you search, explore, visualize, and analyze your unstructured data to ultimately help identify and select the correct data to improve model performance. Catalog is designed for AI and ML applications and is compatible with existing data warehouses, such as Databricks or a homegrown metadata store. We're going to walk through how to find specific data quickly. In an ocean of data with 9 million data rows, say I'm looking to find text data that's in English. In Catalog, I can search and filter by metadata. I uploaded metadata for the language that each text file is in, so filtering that by English brings me down to around 92,000 data rows, which is already a huge improvement. I notice that there are a few data rows that talk about European football, and I'm suddenly interested in finding all text data rows in English that talk about European football. I can select a few data rows where this is the case and do a similarity search that leverages embeddings to find all other text data rows that talk about European football, and I can create a labeling function called European football. From there, I can filter by that function and it will automatically find text in English related to European football among all my data sets by analyzing data embeddings narrowing my data down to around 3,000 data rows. You can also do this for images too. So let's say I came across a duck while scrolling through my data, and now I want to find all other images containing ducks. I can select this image and do a similarity search to find some other images with ducks in them. And from there, I'll create a labeling function that will leverage embeddings to find all other duck images. Now when I filter by this function, it automatically finds images with ducks, and with that, we're down to 999 data rows. From here, I can send a batch of duck data rows to a project for labeling so that my labeling team can label ducks and I can train my model on that data. Another way to use Catalog is to help find low-quality data that you might not want to label. So while scrolling through my data, I noticed that some images were pretty dark and low-quality. So just like we did in the previous videos, I can find similar data and create a labeling function that will help identify all of my dark images. From there, I can filter by this function and find all the images that aren't going to be valuable in training my model since they're underexposed and of poor lighting. I don't want to spend the time and cost to label these so I can select and delete them from catalog. Another type of low quality data that I might want to filter for is blurry data. Once I've seen a few examples of blurry data, I can do a similarity search and create a function that will automatically find similar images of blurry data using data embeddings. And now when I go to catalog to filter for this, it brings up all the blurry images that aren't going to be impactful for the model that I'm building. And rather than sending this to my annotation team, I'm just going to delete them. Finally, I'm going to show you how you can find duplicate data. In this case, I'm looking at almost 5 million data rows. I noticed two of the same clock images in catalog, and I want to know if there are more duplicate data sets. I can click Find Similar Data and create a labeling function named Clock. When I filter for this clock function, it automatically finds images containing clocks among all my data by analyzing data embeddings and this automatically pulls together all the data rows containing clocks in one place. Scrolling through this data, I notice that there are quite a few similar data rows, so from there, I can make decisions about selecting and deleting duplicate data that won't be valuable to label.